Okay, and now it's time to see how Capella can help making a better world. Arnaud Demogard and Raphael Page are two software engineers from OBO. Uh, they had the opportunity to work with the Seaclinos Association to design a seagoing vessel unable to remove plastic waste from the ocean. And since they are doing things well, they have integrated the life cycle assessment in their approach. In, indeed, uh, it would be useless to develop such a system if it was polluting by itself. So welcome on board, ship boy, and please tell us more about your project. <laughs> Thank you. So hello, everyone, and welcome for this last session of the day. So uh, I'm Arnaud Dumegar. And I am Raphael Page. And uh, so, uh, as Pedro said, he said uh, we will uh, present you uh, the work we did on the project to integrate model-based system engineering and life cycle assessment in uh, in the context of uh, a use case that is uh, provided by the sea cleaners uh, on, a, on a boat uh, to clean uh, the ocean from uh, plastic uh, waste. So. Um, most of the scientists uh, agree on the fact that uh, the, the next years will have a decisive impact on our ecological and economical future. Uh, so it's really important for us to uh, manage to uh, uh, do a system design that allow to take into account this, uh, these environmental aspects. So that's uh, the, main, uh, the main point. Uh, the, there exist some approaches to uh, integrate uh, environmental aspect into the development process of a system. These uh, approach are called eco-design. Uh, these uh, approach are uh, tool, uh, and uh, one of these tools is a life cycle assessment, which is both a method and a tool that allow to quantify this uh, environmental performance. Uh, most of you, I think, know what is MPSC, so I don't uh, go further than that. Uh, the, in this project, we try to answer uh, one question, which is why and how to connect model-based system engineering and life cycle assessment in order to form a eco design process. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, in order to answer both of those questions, we worked on the elaboration of a case study. Um, so this case study is based on the conception phase of the Manta, an ocean cleaning boat designed by Manta Innovation. Um, the outcome of this study was the production of a Capella model uh, completed with life cycle assessment data that uh, allowed the realization of a life cycle uh, analysis of uh, subunit of the Manta, the waste to energy conversion unit. So a little bit more about the Manta. Uh, the Manta is an innovative vessel whose mission is to help clean the ocean um, by collecting waste floating on its surface. To reduce her carbon footprint, the Manta will be powered not only with propellers driven by um, <coughs> electric motors, but also with automated rigings. Uh, something interesting about the Manta is that the electricity that is going to be needed to power both the rigings and the engines uh, will not only be supplied by uh, common generators, but also by onboard equipments for the production of energy from renewable sources. Uh, the Manta will, uh, for example, be equipped uh, with wind turbines, hydro generators, solar panels, and uh, by the waste to energy conversion units. Uh, so this hybrid propulsion system will offer the Manta the necessary mobility to rapidly access high density plastic pollution areas um, in order to collect floating macro waste uh, right before they sink into the ocean. Um, the um, large energy production coupled with uh, the onboard storage capacity uh, will offer the Manta a maximized autonomy that will allow her to navigate during all her work phases. Something else that's interesting and really innovative about the Manta is its waste collection system. 
Um, there's going to be collectors that are placed in between its hulls uh, that are going to quickly bring waste to an onboard factory where they will be sorted, shredded, and stored. A waste to energy conversion unit will then convert the plastic waste into energy. Uh, but I will go back to this uh, conversion unit uh, later on. Um, so in order to quantify the environmental impact of the Manta on its environment uh, and make sure that the Manta is actually doing more good than harm, uh, we used the life cycle assessment method that Arno will now explain. Thank you. So uh, what is life cycle assessment? So uh, life cycle assessment is an analysis uh, that allows to quantify a system environmental impact. Uh, this analysis considers the complete life cycle of a system. So from the raw material extraction, uh, from uh, to manufacturing of the system, its transportation, its use, uh, its uh, uh, maintenance, and its disposal or recycling. Uh, the, this uh, analysis is done by uh, identifying uh, and characterizing any input that the system will take uh, and any of these uh, steps uh, that will take uh, and these inputs will be materials, uh, energy or whatever is needed in order to uh, do any of these steps. And uh, we need also to identify the outputs of the system, so the waste that the system will produce, or the waste that the production of the system will produce, the, uh, and the various emissions that are done uh, by the system use or manufacturing, or etc. Uh, from this identification of input and outputs, uh, the, uh, there is a, a step of uh, computation of indicators. And these indicators are the quantified uh, information uh, stating the environmental performance of the system. Uh, this indicator states what is the impact on the climate change, on ozone depletion, or many other uh, uh, indicators. Uh, by considering the complete life cycle of the system and by computing many indicators, uh, the uh, analysis, this life cycle assessment analysis, allow to avoid pollution transfer between life cycle phases or between indicators. So this is really important as it allows to have a very broad view of the system and of its impacts. Um, the life cycle assessment is uh, specified and standardized in uh, five ISO, uh, five ISO standards. So the, they are depicted here. Uh, basically, a life cycle assessment framework is uh, start from uh, a goal and scope definition. Uh, this uh, defines what we want to analyze uh, in the life cycle assessment. And then from this uh, goal and scope definition, there is an inventory analysis. So this inventory is the set of flows and processes that are used uh, in the system. So our input flows of so everything that uh, uh, is used during the system life cycle, output flows, everything that is produced by the system and potentially polluting. And there are also some processes. Processes are just activities uh, transforming inputs into outputs. From this inventory, uh, the impact assessment, fa assessment phase is doable by relying on methods that allow to compute indicators. Uh, there are many tools that allow to do a uh, life cycle assessment. Uh, uh, there are commercial and closed source ones like Simapro or Gabi and some open source and commercial ones like OpenLCA. Uh, OpenLCA uh, LCA has uh, the, the good idea to be based on Eclipse. Uh, most of these, uh, these tools uh, are, uh, all of these tools leverage environmental reference databases. All these databases are uh, either generic, so they, are, they contain common information about materials, substances, uh, any flow that uh, we may use, but uh, they are most of the time quite broad and not really detailed. Uh, but there are also domain-specific uh, databases that are very specific to, uh, for example, energy, food, uh, uh, material production, or whatever. There are many of them. Uh, most of the life cycle assessment tools uh, are made up on the same process. So they take the product structure, process and flows as input, some reference databases, and they compute LCA reports from all these informations. 
it's really simplified, but that, uh, and uh, from this uh, LC, is, uh, the end of the of the production of the LC report produce many information, including some uh, reports like this one, where you can see that uh, what is the impact of the various parts of your system on every uh, indicator. So Raphael will go further maybe in uh, later on. So conceiving a system is quite complex. Uh, complex systems are huge. Uh, it's really difficult to, uh, to model them completely. And doing a life cycle assessment on a complex system is also difficult. You have to specify what is the scope of the system that you want to analyze. Uh, but you can uh, imagine that you want to do some uh, high level early analysis of your system that will allow you to give, that will give you some uh, broad uh, information on uh, the, imp the environmental impact of your system. But you can also do some late analysis on details part of the system where you will have very specific information and very uh, detailed uh, computations of impacts. Uh, you can focus on some system use cases. You may want also to focus on some impacted parts of the system, very specific uh, parts of the system. So there are many parts of the system, many components, many relations between the components or the elements. So you will have to also handle this, uh, this complexity. And the MBAC is, uh, is very useful for this. So there are also some things that are very important is that uh, Model-based system engineering is done by system engineers. Life cycle assessment is done by LC analysts. Uh, those uh, people are specialized in their domain. They use specific tools. They have specific knowledge. And so they need to communicate in order to, uh, for each one, each other to contribute and to uh, take part of, uh, of everything that is done with in the collaboration. So it's really important to keep uh, the analysis and the model in sync. And this is one of the difficulties of, the, of this approach. So there are many workflows that we have uh, used, decided to use Capella and some LCA tools. So the MBAC tools, uh, they reference the product definition. And we propose to uh, to make a, a, a life cycle assessment extension that will allow to import the LCA reference databases. These databases will uh, be the same one as uh, the ones that are used by LCA tools. Uh, we will provide a way to, uh, to quantify and type the various substance, material, or energy that are used by the tool directly inside the Capella extension, so inside Capella. And we will provide ways to attach LCA information onto the product definition. And from this Capella model extended with life cycle assessment information, we uh, export data onto uh, a product structure that is suitable for and uh, readable for life cycle assessment tools that will then produce uh, their analysis and their results and their reports. So now Raphael will, will uh, explain to you the, the concept and the, the settings uh, behind our project. Thank you, Arno. Um, so the goal of our experiment was uh, twofold. First, uh, we wanted to introduce the different MBSC concepts to the conception phase of the Manta, the vessel that I introduced a little bit earlier in the presentation. And then bring this model to life cycle assessment tools. Um, in order to conduct this experiment, we partnered with two entities, uh, Menta Innovation and Altran. Um, so in this context of this experiment, uh, the role of Menta Innovation as lead of the technical hub was to conceive the Manta and integrate innovative technologies in order to make it um, ecologically relevant. Uh, our role at OBO was then to model the Manta with Capella and uh, later on developed a Capella extension that would allow LCA data to be attached to the elements of the model. 
um, having done that, the role of Altran was to conduct a lifecycle analysis of the Manta to support the different uh, architecture decisions made by Manta Innovation. Uh, in order to do so, the data provided by our model was integrated into CIMAPRO, um, the LCA tool used at Altran. Um, in order to have both Capella and CIMAPRO communicate, we also defined an MBLC LCA interface. Um, so during our experiment, we did not study the Manta as a whole, but rather focused on one of its subsystems. So I mentioned the waste to electricity conversion unit uh, a little bit earlier, and I will now go a little bit more into detail. Um, so we did not uh, study the Manta as a whole because it was just far too large for a first experimentation. And um, this subsystem presented uh, several points of interest. So the goal of the WECU was, uh, is first to collect uh, waste, then transform this waste into fuel, and then use this fuel as energy to power uh, the rest of the boat and power itself. Um, what was interesting about this subsystem to us was that the um, technical solutions were still in research, so they were not fixed. And the environmental impacts of these units were very important to assess because uh, the more plastic we convert into electricity, the less fuel, uh, the less fossil fuel the boat is going to use. So the most energy efficient it's going to be. And the less plastic on board, it meant for longer missions and hence more plastic removed from the ocean. Uh, it also presented a, well, kind of a downside uh, because transforming plastic into fuel also meant um, emitting potentially harmful gas and uh, chars, even though the emissions of gas can be mitigated by uh, capturing all the harmful elements to it. Uh, so the first step of our experiment, as I mentioned, was to uh, model this unit. Uh, so. On this slide, you can see the logical architecture of the waste to electricity conversion unit, uh, the different components that's composing this unit, uh, their functions, and how they interact with the different actors. You can also see in blue the main functional chain of uh, how to transform plastic into energy. So first, uh, waste is collected from the ocean by the waste collection unit. Uh, this waste is then transferred into the waste preparation unit where it's sorted. Um, Non-plastic waste is going to be stored on the boat to be later recycled by inland facilities. But uh, the rest of the waste, the plastic waste, is going to be transformed into fuel in the waste to fuel conversion unit. Um, the, pro the result of this conversion is then going to be used as fuel to, in the fuel to energy conversion unit to either be stored on batteries or reused immediately uh, in the waste to electricity conversion unit itself. You can also see that we represented the different um, uh, produce of the fuel to energy conversion unit that are being released into the atmosphere. Um, now that we realized that model, uh, the second step of our experiment was to attach uh, life cycle assessment data onto it. So this is where we developed our capital extension, but would allow us to import uh, life cycle assessment databases content directly into Capella. So that's what you can see at the left uh, hand side of the slide. Um, once those data was, uh, were imported into Capilla, we were able to attach it to uh, components, functions, and exchanges. And we also allowed the extension to um, provide an overview of the LCA data directly into diagrams. So that's what you can see on the diagrams. It's uh, represented as uh, circles. 
Um, so you can see that we attached uh, the carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and methane flows directly onto the uh, the exchange between the conversion uh, fuel to energy and uh, the atmosphere. Um, our, exchange, our extension also provides a tableau view that allows the user to edit and visualize the multiple LCA data used during the analysis. Um, so what you can see on the slide is that the left hand side is your uh, typical Capella Explorer view with the different components and their functions and their exchanges as well. And uh, below them, the LCA data that we created. On the right hand side of the view is uh, the detailed um, representation of the LCA data in themselves. Um, this view allows to allow us to manage uh, complex and well detailed LCA data, categorize them, quantify them, and define their dependencies to other LCA data. Um, this representation is also contextual in the sense that it depends on which component we created the view on. Uh, we can also make use of Capella's modern states uh, to represent the complete life cycle of the system. Uh, to do that, we just allocate the different functions of the system onto the different steps of uh, the life cycle. So um, this allows us to uh, uh, focus on, um, well, to have a better focus during the analysis on which step of the life cycle of the product have which impact. Our extension also allows us to export the capital model. Uh, so this model can be read by LCA tools. Uh, this export is parameterized um, depending on which part of the model you want to focus the analysis on. So we made it possible to export uh, the model using functional chain, architecture level, modern states, or just a free selection of the different elements of your model. Um, the way the export work is that it's going to look for the different elements on the um, uh, mode that you selected that contain the LCA data and export this LCA data into a structure that is readable by the LCA tools. And the LCA tools are then able to conduct an analysis and produce a report that uh, Arno showed you a little bit earlier in the presentation. Um, this report computes indicator based on different kinds of methods and those indicators allow us to quantify the impact uh, that different part of the system have on their environment. So for example, here we can see that the sorting part of uh, the sorting function of our system has an impact on photochemical oxidant formations. But we can also see that the plastic valorization have a negative impact on um, human toxicity, this negative impact means that it's uh, bettering this indicator. Um, so now that this report is created, um, system engineers can then uh, use this report to focus uh, which part of the system can be bettered and um, have a better impact on the environment. So this starts really uh, an iterative cycle between LCA and MBSE that Arno is going to explain in more details. Thank you. So uh, this uh, collaborative work between uh, life cycle assessment and model-based system engineering uh, start with this, uh, the production of this uh, LCA report uh, containing uh, detailed information on the system and on its various part and the, their impact on uh, the various indicators. Uh, these data are, are then uh, fed back into the Capella model in order to uh, to get information on uh, directly inside the, the model to get information on what is the, the, the environmental impact of the various parts of the system. Uh, it enriches the Capella view, the MBSC model, with uh, LCA engineers' knowledge uh, of the system and allow them to, uh, to do uh, design trade-off based on this information that will be added to other information, of course. 
but uh, from this uh, this new model or the modification of the the cap lambda that will be made afterward we need to reproduce uh, the uh, product structure that is modified and uh, generate uh, it for uh, the LCA tools and update the, uh, the model in the LCA tool to take into account the modification and compute new reports that will be fed back. So this is really important to, uh, to work on this part of the synchronization between uh, model-based system engineering uh, and uh, life cycle assessment. Um, so we decided to uh, go for uh, with two uh, technologies in order to implement this ex this extension. Uh, so the first technology is the Kit Alpha viewpoint technology that is uh, made exactly to extend uh, Capella. So we provided a, a life cycle assessment data meta model containing information on uh, containing uh, specific life cycle assessment data information. And uh, we provided some ways to connect this data to uh, extend Capella models. Uh, we uh, extend Capella representation, as uh, Raphael presented to you, and provided some new ones like the tables. Uh, we simplified, uh, well, we use the Kit Alpha viewpoint technology as it simplifies uh, the deployment and integration of a viewpoint and specifically a, a prototype, prototype viewpoint into the uh, Eclipse environment and in the Capella workbench. The second uh, technological uh, point is on the use of the OpenLCA API. Uh, the OpenLCA API is uh, the API on which the OpenLCA tool is based on. Uh, this API is publicly available and uh, it allows to, uh, to connect to uh, environmental databases, uh, import data, read these databases, and it also allows to and provide facilities to import and export uh, data into specific formats that are formats used by LCA tools. So we rely on this and uh, in order to, to develop this, uh, this LCA extension to Capella. So as a conclusion, uh, I would say that we try to, uh, to answer the, this question why and how to connect model-based system engineering and life cycle assessment in order to form a NICO design uh, process. Uh, we provided a, a prototype uh, tool that allows to connect uh, life cycle assessment and model-based system engineering uh, through uh, the use of uh, LCA database import, uh, relation between new uh, between LCA concept and uh, Capella models and Capella elements. Uh, we have an integration of uh, with uh, diagrams and uh, new uh, new views like tables, and uh, some connection to LCA tools through an export facility. We also uh, started to do some uh, first reflection on the, the methodology and uh, between uh, life cycle assessment and model-based system engineering. Uh, computing uh, system environment uh, performance indicators is something that is valuable. It has a huge interest for uh, system designers as uh, it is uh, it that is provide a quantified information on the environmental performance of the system. And as a, a quantified information uh, is provided, uh, it allows to do some architecture trade-off and then to compare a version of the system based on facts and values that are computed. So this is really valuable for the system con uh, conception. Um, in this experiment, this project, we uh, conducted a collaborative work. So we did uh, some collaborative work with system engineers, system engineers from Monta Innovation, and uh, LCA analysts and uh, environmental system engineers from uh, Altran Toulouse. So we did uh, first uh, experimentation with a, a prototype, but a lot remains to be done on this subject. Uh, the model-based system engineering and life cycle assessment connection needs to be enhanced. Uh, there is a, a lot to do on the, the parameterization of the data export, on the selecting various parts of the, the MBSC model completed with uh, LCA data, and uh, to export them as information usable by life cycle assessment tools. 
uh, we also need to uh, to handle multiple data formats and tools to in order to communicate with most of the, the available tools and uh, we need to work uh, on this uh, feedback of life cycle assessment uh, analysis and results in order to do some system design trade-off or to allow uh, system engineer to do some system design trade-off uh, the integration into capella also needs to be uh, enhanced uh, on the addition of the values on the scaling of the addition of values because there is a lot of uh, information to that can be added into uh, capella model regarding the lca extension and so um, a lot of uh, data means uh, a lot of computation most of the time so it needs to be scaled up uh, and the integration into the methodology is also something that needs to be really tackled uh, uh, because it's quite difficult uh, the connecting or extending the arcadia methodology with life cycle assessment formation may be something that really that may be really interesting to do and will uh, ease the work of the system engineer regarding the integration of life cycle assessment uh, we also need to uh, take a look into the whole system life cycle and see how to integrate information from production of the system, uh, recycling of the system, maintenance of the system, and all this information needs to be used in order to uh, export also the data. Uh, the lifespan of uh, the various parts of the system is also something that is used by life cycle uh, in life cycle analysis. And this also needs to be uh, to be integrated into the, the extension. Of course, I already said it, but the synchronization between LCA models and model-based system engineering models is something very important, and it's uh, something that needs to be taken care of. Uh, we have created a prototype, so we need to really uh, transform it into a real tool, and. Uh, on all this subject, we are really open to, uh, to collaboration. So thank you for your uh, attention. And uh, if you have questions, we'll be very happy to answer them. Oh, well, yes, we are. <laughs> Thanks for your presentation. Uh, OK, we, we can go directly to the questions. Uh, could you describe arch architectural decisions uh, made in the Manta case? Or did stakeholders agree on trade-offs? Um, <laughs> uh, well, this is the model. No, uh, the, uh, actually, it's uh, really we have a, a prototype tool, a really prototype tool. We try to first uh, experiment on uh, what are the LCA data that we need to integrate into the model. We try to export the data to uh, LCA tools and uh, manage to import all this data into the, uh, the LCA tools. Uh, this is already one big part of the system, uh, one big part of the, the work that has been done. Um, uh, so, um, the, I will not be able to speak for uh, Manta Innovation about, about the design trade-offs that are done. And I, so, uh, sorry, but I will not be able to, uh, to answer all of these questions. <laughs> OK, thanks. Uh, the question is also a tricky one. Uh, the following <laughs> will, be, will be easier, I promise. So okay. when you defining the life cycle stages of the system as mode or states, did you also specify which functions of the systems or components will be available at each life cycle stage? Yes, this is, this is the point. Uh, the point here is to. Uh, uh, when you develop your system, uh, you have many uh, many parts on it. You have many components, many functions. Uh, by uh, uh, creating a, a state, uh, a, a modern state uh, diagram, and creating all the, the life cycle of the system uh, as uh, using modern states, uh, our plan is to then attach the various parts uh, of the system, various function into the correct uh, states and mode of the system, and then use this in order to export uh, the data and contextualize the data that are exported for the LCA tool. Uh, this is uh, still uh, really prototyping uh, for now. Uh, so uh, we did not uh, 
further work on each uh, life cycle stage, but uh, this is uh, ongoing work. Okay, and um, do you think this atom could go to the Kepler labs? Maybe, I have no idea. We need to uh, to have a look. This is, Kepler labs are way too fresh for us. Uh, I have uh, <laughs> no, no way to understand this question right now. <laughs> okay, thank you. Fun for the question. Yes. Um, and when will the Manta start cleaning? Uh, uh, I think the current information that's available on the website says that the Manta will start cleaning in 2023. Uh, but once again, we can't really speak for Manta innovation on this. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, next question relies on the previous one, maybe. Uh, will this add-on become available? Well, in a, yeah, in a way, yes, I'm sure, but which one? <laughs> yeah, uh, for, for now, this, uh, this add-on is uh, a prototype. So it will not be released as it, of course. Uh, that's, uh, that's for sure. Uh, so uh, we hope. Uh, we really hope that this will become available someday, of course. Uh, under what form, uh, under what circumstances, I have no idea for now. Okay, thank. And a, and a very easy one to to conclude your presentation, uh, or to create a table view. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, a table view is... Um, so a table view is a kind of representation that is available in Sirius. So Capella is uh, the, all the diagrams and the tables in Sirius are uh, representations and tables are one kind of representation. So you can extend uh, Capella with new tables uh, using the, uh, the Kitafa viewpoints, for example, and uh, uh, extend Capella with this. Uh, but uh, I think an answer has already been done also uh, provided also on the fact that you can also use the um, other tables uh, that has uh, that are the mass visualization view that allow also to manipulate data using tables in Capella. Uh, 